Hey, Maggie, good to see you. Happy Thursday. <laughs> thank you, thank you, same to you. Yeah, super excited to talk to you today about the topic of book publishing, self-publishing. Um, so many people I know, both entrepreneurs and not, um, and I'm sure you've probably got some data on this, say that they want to write a book, right? How many people have a book in them, so to speak? Um, mm. <laughs> and that's exactly what you do. You help people write their books, not only write, but also actually get their book published and into the world. So, mm -hmm. Let's start with um, just, you know, what's your experience, if you have any data on this, um, just, you know, anecdotal stats on how many people want to write a book, um, go through the process and actually then actually publish the book. Any insights on that that we can share as we can? Oh, it's a great question. Yeah. So where I really focus is ghostwriting. Um, so writing people's books for them. But I also do coach people who want to write, who want to actually do the writing on their own. Um, and I would say that um, that everyone can like has a book in them. I yeah. really believe that. Yeah. Um, I don't believe everyone wants to write a book, but I do believe that everyone has a story that's compelling enough. Um, and uh, as far as like how many, like what percentage of people want who want to do it actually finish? Um, gosh, I don't have stats, but. I don't, I feel like you would really need a larger sample size than the individuals I work with, but I think that people do get stuck. Um, I see like a pattern of like areas and I wonder if you, if you'll recognize any of these from when you wrote your book, but like where yeah. people get stuck. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. And most people, like the vast majority of people get stuck at having an idea mm. <laughs> really and never, never move beyond. Um, and I've gotten there too. There's so many ideas I've had that I'm like, this is a great, like, and especially when I was younger, you know, and I, I, but anyway, but even now I'm like, oh, I want to write this one and I'll write like a page of notes one day. And that's kind of as far as the idea will go. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think the vast majority of people get stuck at their idea um, because yeah, well, you can ask me why I think that, but yeah, that, that's probably, I don't know. I'd say 90% of people get 95% of people get stuck at their idea. I could totally see that. Um, and I think a stat that I had read a while ago, because I, I was interested in this topic of how many people start books and actually never, you know, get to, you know, print copy. We say publish, yeah. obviously, that means a lot of things these days. And the whole mm -hmm. concept of, you know, getting a publisher and, and that whole formal process is, I'm sure you, you, you know, talk to this, you know, talk about this with your clients. It's less than that, right? It's much harder yes. than it was even 10 and especially 20 years ago to get a book deal and the whole advance and, you know, all those things, right? Um, so that's why people are going with self-publishing. Um, it's funny. I, so I don't know if you know this, Maggie, but um, so when I, I got divorced at age 30 and uh, started writing a book co-authored with a gentleman that I was teaching with, um, teaching college with, who was an English professor. I'm like, perfect. <laughs> uh, called 30 Reasons Not to Marry Before 30. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I wrote the, I, we pretty much wrote the whole book. I interviewed like, I don't know, probably 100 women um and have just copious amounts of research and have the outline and all that and then i got through the process and i want you to maybe speak to this a little bit because i do i you do mostly uh non-fiction is that right ghostwriting mm -hmm. okay all non-fiction yeah perfect so i i was gone through this whole process and then i realized we i don't want this to be my platform right i don't yeah. want to for the next, you know, five years, go out and promote this on this particular topic, right? And so when yeah. I went to go write my second book, it it made sense, right? It was on brand. It's what I talk about. It's what I do. Yeah, <laughs> you know, load differently. Do you see that sometimes in folks where oh, they're that is book idea that's totally <laughs> not aligned? That's with a great them. insight. Like I think there's a difference between a passion project and um, writing a book that supports your business. Okay. There's like three different things I want to say. Number yeah. one, you said that people choose self-publishing because getting a book deal is harder these days. So I wouldn't agree with that. Um, okay. Self-publishing has actually gotten 
more and more sophisticated to the point that the distribution process for self-publishing, especially, and this speaks to your actual question about platform, especially yeah. if you have an established platform or you're in the process of building a platform with an audience, um, self-publishing is not like a, like a consolation prize. It's actually a great way to publish your book and have total control over how it's distributed. So is it going to be your free lead magnet on your site? Are you going to give away a bunch of copies every time you speak or give away just a few to, to make sure that people show up to your in-person event or whatever? All those are much harder to make when you have a publisher involved. Yeah. And if you're already been marketing your business in other ways, you are actually, if you're like a CEO, entrepreneur, founder, you're actually probably, your team is probably way going to be way better at promoting the book than actual book publishers are because what book publishers do is they um release you know they make all their deals and they release their books on a schedule kind of like movies right yeah. and uh whichever one but it's not like movies because movies have these big budgets of marketing you know sort of depending on the type of movie books are kind of like they all get out thrown into the pool and whoever swims, that's the, those are the books that get marketing budget. So it's actually decided on like buzz and like early sales. Huh. And if your book doesn't, it's just going to sink like a stone. So you have way more control. Anyway, sorry to like rant about no, this, but no. just for like one more, like no, to make I'm glad you have way more control. That's good. Yeah. Over your book um and what it does for your business when you self publish and so that that would be and what's cool now is like self publishing is cheaper and it's more sophisticated and looks more like it's really hard to tell the difference between a self published book i mean it's impossible actually to tell it if you have two paperbacks yeah. except if you know publishers names and stuff like that you know if you see it's not like little brown on the back but um anyway so that's one thing the other thing is it's a great question what you said about um what you want to be known for right so it's if you're if you're writing a book, um, it, this this is exactly the reason, right? If you're a CEO, you're not or entrepreneur, or like whatever you want to call yourself, like a leader, um, and you you really want to make sure the book is what you want to be known for, and it's reflecting what you want to be known for because the book isn't actually in its in it of itself. I mean, there's lots of different ways to slice this, and people like look up to people like you know Tim Ferriss or Rachel Hollis who they wrote books that kind of catapulted them into like a celebrity stratosphere. But like most of us aren't going to get that and probably don't even need or want that. You know, you really want something that is basically just a portable takeaway. This is Pippi Longstocking. I'm using this for a project, but anyway, it's just like this small, but it's like this in here is like everything about your, you know, the things that someone should know about your business or about who you are, why you're different. Yeah. I definitely think that, um, yeah, picking the topic. That said, people who come to me sometimes they have a passion project that's been on their heart for decades. Yeah, and that and they have the money because they are a successful person to just ask someone to either coach them through writing it out or or um, get like even like the ghostwriting process. So I'll write it and and interview them, and they just want to get it out. Yeah, and that's like a separate thing. But I think you're absolutely right. If the book is for the business then it needs to be, you need to have drawn out, like, what makes you different? What, what did you build your, like, if you already built a platform, like, what did you build it on? And if you're in the process of doing that, what do you want to be known for, right? Got it. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Mary Lyons in the chat uh, here on LinkedIn, um, and we're on a couple different platforms right now, but on LinkedIn made a good point. And this is actually something that I did with my book, um, because I should have hired a ghostwriter, but I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know you yet, Maggie. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't doing it yet, I don't think, because no, it was a few no. years ago when you published. I was at your launch party. But anyway, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was four years ago. The launch of the book was I know. four years ago. And I started it two years prior to that. So it took me two years to get through the process. Mary's mm -hmm. comment um, is recorded for starters. And that's exactly what I did. I spent... 4th of July, six years ago in at Harahub with the video camera for like eight hours. And I just mm -hmm. bringed up my entire life story on video that had that transcribed. Um, and then the process ensued from there. Um, 
But that is, that's almost a long, you know, can be a longer process. Whereas if you can engage somebody from the get go, like yourself, that can really help you draw out the right things. There was a lot of stuff that we had to really just kind of sift through that was irrelevant. So mm. um, yeah. that's a great point. So, yeah. And so I actually, as a coach too, um, even if people want to write their own book, um, I find like it's helpful that I've been a journalist um, in my, like, two careers ago, um, because um, what a journalist does is they ask questions to build a story, right? And that's what I do with my clients, right? And so I do want to know everything about you. I love you. You're my client. Tell me everything. That's fine. (laughs) But I'm going to curate your, so I'm going to like help you pick out the pieces that tell the actual story that you want to be known for. Yeah. Um, And sometimes it can be hard to know, like, especially when it's your story, like, well, you know, Cub Scouts did teach me like, you know, or like, you know, my dad was a lot of times there's like abuse or trauma in someone's past. And they're like, how do I talk about the fact that I learned from this and grew from this without kind of talking about it? You know, things like that, where it's like, yes, we can shape a story that like um, without like having to like, lay, like put every single thing out there. Right. So I think that that can be helpful to have just a second set of eyes, um, particularly someone, particularly like a journalist kind of, um, you know, a journalist is always asking questions for a reason. They don't want to just know everything. Right. Yeah. Um, and so that can be helpful. And I, the other thing you said about, I do think that like, it's actually, you know, where people really struggle is with the story. Like what is the story they're telling? So like, I mean, you know, we know the idea we want to get across, right? Or like the the big like the takeaway. But like, in order for a book to be readable, I'm realizing because I'm reading some business books to like get more into this genre. Yeah. It actually has to tell a story. Like it has yeah. to be like you know, yeah. it's not just a book she book. started out here and now you know it has to be yeah. a narrative. So that can be really hard because life. It's funny because we live the way we learn and the way we decide to buy things and all kinds of po- stories are very powerful yeah. and like that stories are everywhere, but actually life is not like a story. There's all this <laughs> extraneous stuff. There's because a, what is a story is like an event and then it causes another event and it causes another event and, and until you get to, and there's a struggle, right? And that causes something. And that cause and effect from like thing to thing to thing is what people struggle with. Cause they just want to talk about, well, but what about when I was in high school? It's like, well, what <laughs> is, is that, that cause? <laughs> that's going to move us to the next, to the next thing. And so I do, I I feel like that's kind of the interesting part of this work. That's why I like doing it is that I think people have stories, um, but it's not about how interesting of a person you are. Honestly, it's about, can you, can you actually like shape all this, (laughs) all these experiences, right. Into something that's like, you know, a book cinematic is it draws people in. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I did. I learned that the hard way. I mean, again, to the point of just reporting and and giving a chronology of my life is very, very different to your point than stories. And uh, Rachel Kowalski was the one that actually helped me with my book and the developmental editing process. And I did learn a lot about that, that process through working with her because it just, I mean, (laughs) to your point, and that's hard when you're writing your own story, not every business book is someone's story, right? You might be, you know, interviewing people and delivering other content that's not personal to you. But in my case, mine was the first part of the book. And it's like, yes. oh, your point, you're like, okay, why does that thing in high school need to be in there? Right? Like, is that really part of the story? And like, it's hard as an author and, and why I think it's important to have a coach. It's hard as an author to let go of some of that. And you need somebody mm-hmm. to tell you like, this is not critical as part of the story. <laughs> it's also good. So like a lot of, so as a write, like, cause I write my own stuff. I think I, I really empathize with like not wanting to let go of certain things, or there's a certain type of resistance that authors have around like where we, this is my problem is like, we keep switching. So we're like, yeah, but that's interesting. So should I go down that path? Um, but I already, so like when you have a coach, like when you pay me, we have a certain amount of time together. And if you don't do what you need to do in that time, then your time expires, right? And so 
So that can kind of keep you like, is it important enough for you to go follow that tributary that you're going to, yeah. you, it's going to take you a couple months to figure out whether that's, you know, do you really want to do that? Or do you want to stay with the thesis that we established together? That can be real, that can really help people out of, because I think that's part of when you, we titled this, like what, how to finish. Yeah. And starting is not as hard, although it's hard too, but but finishing has a lot to do with staying focused and believing that you've chosen the right thing. And oftentimes what I'll tell myself is like, I can write another book. Like I'm trying to write this book. <laughs> and then when I finish this one, I'm going to go, I'm going to write that idea down and see if I want to write that one. It can yeah. be very like clarifying. So. That's a good reminder. Although I did feel like, especially when I finished my book, I was like, this will be my last book. <laughs> It's yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, I think it's not for everybody, but I, I, yeah. I know that you're proud that you did it. I know you're proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and to that point, I think the stat I read was like 95% of people start their book and don't actually get it finished, meaning like book in hand type of scenario, mm -hmm. which is it's a pretty big spread, right? <laughs> You've got a lot of people. Yeah you know, like my first go at it, right? Spent a lot of time, did a lot of research, did a lot of writing. Um, I still have the darn, you know, three ring binder with all <laughs> everything in it. I don't know why I'm hanging on to it. It's kind of bizarre, but um, but yeah, most people don't get to the end of that process. So let's talk about the end of the process, so to speak. You know, sure. once, you know, let's make the assumption you've gotten it all down. It's been edited multiple times. That was my issue. I had several copy editors and okay. here's my advice. <laughs> just side note, I'm no expert in this, but just going through it. Um, I don't know if you've experienced this, Maggie. Um, I waited like two years to do the audiobook for my book. Mm. I was just busy and I, I didn't feel like a priority for me. You know, I had it in hard copy and then Kindle. So I went ahead and, and did the audiobook. I read it myself and oh my gosh, even though I had three copy editors read the darn book. Bad mistakes. <laughs> oh, it was maddening. I literally had my book next to me and I'd like rip open a page and like highlight it. I'm like, what is the thing uh, here? This is just crazy. All that to say, my recommendation for folks that know they're gonna do an audiobook is to before it actually goes to print and, and it's less important these days because you have print on demand but there's still some effort to go in and have the designer you know upload and do the things yeah actually record the audio book before you actually like really ship it off to publish because that that act of reading it aloud you will find you know, no matter how many copy editors you have, you'll find issues with it. And it's great to be able to get that done before it gets pushed out in the world. So my that's a great point, actually. That's not the way my process works. But like, um, I do read when I so after a book is edited, I actually do read not copy edited yet. But I do read the book out loud the entire oh. book. Yeah. To myself, because yeah. when you read, it's not just like, make, like grammatical mistake, you'll find more mistakes like that. But it's also like, this sentence is really clunky and you can't really hear it. You can hear it in your head a little bit, but yeah. I'd be surprised if like some of the best authors, like our favorite authors that we love reading their stuff, like did it, I bet you they read it out loud or like when you hear, I mean, it really with poetry, especially it's just so lyrical. It's like, and I'm not even just talking about rhyming stuff, but like I actually just the other day had this experience where I heard someone read this poem out loud um, in a writing group I'm in. Yeah. It's a famous, pro it's not like, you know, just her, she wrote it. It's like a really great poem and it was beautiful and I'd never heard it before. And she read it twice and I was like, God, that poem. And then she emailed it to all of us. Mm -hmm. And when I read it on the screen, I was like, it just didn't even, in your head, it doesn't sound like the same. Anyway, sorry to go off on a little bit of a tangent, no, but no, when no, you, no. like, that's a great thing that you learned because a lot of editors, I don't know, it's not like talked about a lot. I don't know if it's either like really well known that people feel like they don't have to talk about it or like it's not known at all. But when you read words out, when you read the stuff out loud, it's a completely different experience and you will realize right away, like, especially with your sentences, like like the structure, like, oh, yeah. this is clunky. Oh, <laughs> this is hard to get through. Yeah. So um, that's a great tip. Yes, my, my tip of the day. So uh, continuing on this path of getting it finished, what are some of the other things folks, you know, are really going to need to think about and invest in to actually get it to 
in hand print? It's a great question. Um, so if you, you know, if you're working with me, you don't have to really worry about anything. Like once, even if you're doing the coaching, like once we are done with the manuscript, then you just give it to me and I take care of all the other pieces. But those pieces include, so first of all, <laughs> before I get to like how you publish, just like the mindset thing of like, when are you done? Mm -hmm. I actually like to hear what you, like, how did you, because I, I see people really that. slow down at the end yeah. where they, because of and like, and it's hap I'm almost done with the book right now too. It's actually happening to me, except I have a deadline yeah. with my clients, but it's like, I'm like, it's hard to be, feel like it's really yeah. done. Yes. Um. So how did you know when you were done? Did you make a self-imposed deadline or what did you do? Yeah, this is somebody mentioned this to me. I don't even know where I got it, but I, I did it for myself and I've, I've told a number of people, one of our members have been Temecula, Jody Silberman. She's just finishing a book on divorce right now. Um, and I said, Jody, and this is what I did, set a book launch date. Just set a date, mm -hmm. set it, not only set it, like send out the invite, you know, do your yeah. Facebook event, email your folks, like 60 days from now, we're having a party, right? <laughs> Get everybody excited about it. And there's your self-imposed deadline because you don't want yeah, to of, yeah. argue about a book. Because <laughs> I know a lot of people don't finish. And I've talked to people who are 90% of the way and then leave it for three years. Um, and that's really, there's sometimes when like, it's good to take a break from a big writing project um, and like time allows you to like, yeah. like you just can't, you get stuck and that's fine. But like a lot of people actually get stuck in a way that is avoidable, but they have to, yeah, you have to have that thing on the other side. So, but so let's assume that whoever has like is watching is, has that. So when you're actually, when you're absolutely finished, the next thing to do is to, so hopefully like there's two things. If you've been working with an editor all along, like a developmental editor, then they'll read it and they'll give you some, you know, they'll give you some comments, but you'll want to get it edited. Right. And developmental. So like there's developmental is like, uh, just means like, you know, the big stuff, right? Like, is it saying what it, we said, you said it, you wanted it to say, you know, yeah. and if it's not like, where is it missing the mark? That's hopefully that was going on a little bit as you were writing as well. Yeah. And then a line edit is more like, um, yeah, getting in there with the sentences and the paragraphs and the sections and, uh, you know, are the transitions, do I sometimes like stuff like that comes up a lot at the beginning is like, who is this? <laughs> like a character will come in or some something will come in and it feels like the author thinks we already know who they are and we don't. So yeah. stuff like that. Who is this? Like, what is this? I know, I don't know what, you know, it's kind of feels like they're in the middle or haven't told us enough. So it's that kind of editing. Um, yeah. To, to, to be like, introduce this more. I and like, then after you do that, go ahead. Just real quick, just an analogy. I liken it to a development editor being more the architect and building out the framework of the house and the, the other editors that follow might be, you know, putting up paint and doing the, you know, the finishing touches of design or something like that. Um, where I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that had no idea that there was such thing as a developmental editor um, and that they even needed that. Um, and I, I, I'm living proof that I needed that. It was a big, big, big part of getting the book off the ground. God, that's a really, yeah, I think because you're like swimming in a sea of your own ideas if you don't have somebody who can like throw you a life or throw you one of those circle thingies. But anyway, so I, I want in the interest of time. So let's say so you've got that's already two that can probably it's usually the same person, but it can be two different people. Then yeah. because a line editor is still dealing with content, still being like I, you need to write more here, less there. We need to move these things around. We, you haven't explained this, but a copy editor is actually just editing the sentences uh, for grammar and for style. Yeah. So like making things consistent. Um, this is something that I'm learning too, because I'm only on like my third book. So like, so you think like, oh, I'm, it's my, I'm a writer. Like I've got a consistent style, but you like, you come to, you're writing this book over like months. So yeah. the one day that you wrote, you were in it, you weren't in it. Right. And so like, it's a little choppy and there's just like different and she, whoever the copy editor is, she kind of smooths all that out, makes it consistent and fixes a lot, hopefully finds some, um, you know, just typographical and grammatical errors. And then 
you actually, I think you should also have a proofreader. So yeah. that's someone who's looking for missing periods, looking for, mm. um, you know, missing words and stuff like that. Um, but before you do out on any of those steps, now that you say all that, Maggie, somehow. Yeah. It's a lot. Uh, it's a lot. It's fine. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. And then, so I don't want to go too much, in, but yeah. then of course you're going to have like, you know, an interior book designer, like sometimes that's the same as the cover designer. Um, and then, uh, in terms of like how to actually get it out. Yeah. So you can pay someone like me to do that whole process for you. You can, there's a few other really awesome people. If people want to DM me on LinkedIn, I can tell you, but, um, Emily Barros, uh, if she's, she's a hybrid publisher, so that's a little bit of a different process, but you can, where you would pay her, but she has like way more like, uh, resources around how the book is distributed and stuff. Um, but yeah, all the, there's all these nuts and bolts. You have to get an ISBN number. So if you've ever looked at the inside of a book, like there's like this long number that looks kind of like a social security number. You have to actually buy one of those um, mm. and get like each book has its own unique one. You know, mm. there's like a million things, little teeny things. It's almost like it becomes from there. It turns into a very different project once the manuscript's done. Yeah. It turns into more like something you would put into like a sauna yeah. or something or Trello and yeah. just start checking off all the different things you need to do. Um, and but but the cool thing, again, with self-publishing is I love the idea of setting a tape because um, if you're going to do that yourself, like I would say hire someone who can handle, manage that project and yeah. has all the resources, has all the people who do all the things, yeah. but then set that date of like, so two months from now, three months from now, it's going up on Amazon, up on all the ebook sites, it's going to be available and we're going to have a big launch party because otherwise like things will get too far in the weeds. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, Maggie, if folks want to find you, get in touch with you, um, we'll make sure, you know, we have all the connections and the comments and things of that nature. But how do you like for folks to reach out to you? What's the best way? You can DM me on LinkedIn. So if you like, friend, you, you know, you friend me and then you send me a private message. Um, my website is Maggie Frank at HSU, Maggie Frank Shoe, but it's HSU.com. Um, that's, those are the best ways you can get on my newsletter at my website too. So yeah, um, you have an awesome Monday newsletter. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. And I love talking back and forth. So if you DM me, then I can send you, like, I can send you all those resources to, you know, so that you can click, just click links. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm around. Cool. <laughs> Your time, Maggie. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Of course.